I know the week has been going well for the gentleman sitting across the table from me here in the studio. It was uh, just about a year ago that Cincinnati lost the great Cincinnati Pops maestro Eric Kunzel and has been searching for a replacement ever since and announced this week the new music director of the Cincinnati Pops. That is John Morris Russell, who was the assistant conductor with the Cincinnati Symphony Orchestra for more than a decade here, back uh, beginning in the mid-90s. It gives me great pleasure to congratulate and welcome John Morris Russell. Thank you so much, Mark. It's just such a thrill to be here. I, I have to say, when I heard the announcement that uh, you were going to be the conductor, I thought, perfect, perfect pick, because... You spent many years under the uh, under the arm, I guess you could say, of, of Eric Kunzel, <laughs> learning about uh, about the pops. Uh, uh, to you, what does this new position mean to you? Well, you know, uh, uh, working with Eric for for all the years I did, but also working with our great orchestra in both the pops and uh, as the symphony, uh, and you know, uh, did so many family concerts, outreach, community engagement concerts, and. Um, uh, this city, this region is so blessed, not only with the talents of our orchestra, but with all the musical happenings that are going on and the rich legacy of music making that goes back, you know, well over 100 years. Uh, and to be able to pull from those experiences and reinvest it in our own orchestra, um, it's so exciting. Uh, and uh, all, all the great possibilities that are in front of us are, are uh, it's, uh, it's really a great thrill. So, so how hard did you work for the job, John? I mean, you know, I know there were a number of candidates. The search has been going on for a long time. Uh, yeah, how much lobbying did you do? Well, um, uh, I was invited to do the uh, Adina Menzel concert there in, in September, uh, and which was a great homecoming for me because I, I hadn't worked with the orchestra for, uh, for almost five years. Um, and so the opportunity to come back and to work with our great, great musicians and to see so many friends and to kind of reconnect with our staff members, it was like a homecoming. Um, and uh, to think about all the connections um, that I had made through the orchestra uh, in terms of uh, our community concerts, the concerts we did um, with uh, Classical Roots Spiritual Heights and Home for the Holidays and all the New Year's uh, programs and programming. Um, uh, all of those experiences seemed to, to, to come together and coalesce into what the pops could be. Now, what's the biggest lesson that you learned from Eric Kunzel over the years that you worked with him? Well, there, there are a couple of them. Uh, number one is uh, always strive for excellence. You know, uh, uh, there are two types of classes in this world, first class and no class. <laughs> and Eric was always a classy guy. I mean, he was the first one in at, at rehearsals and performances. Uh, he was the last one to leave music hall. He worked his tail off. Um, and all of that... All of that work and effort that he did paid off, and he always conducted with heart, uh, and that was was so important um, in terms of of what it meant to the city and what it meant to the world. Um, and the other thing was uh, how Eric would engage the community. I mean, there wasn't a concert he did that wouldn't have some sort of local performers, dancers, singers, uh, actors, um, and uh, he had this way of embracing the community in the concerts so that it just wasn't the Cincinnati Pops, this was our Pops. Uh, and these are traditions that, that we continue on. In fact, uh, I think some of the big successes uh, that we've had at the Windsor Symphony Orchestra have been because I've taken those pages right out of E.K.'s playbook. <laughs> uh, and um, so it's just great to be back to, uh, to re-engage with our, our community and, and to uh, continue making great music with our Cincinnati Pops. So, so what has life been like in Windsor? You've been uh, the conductor of the Windsor Symphony Orchestra for four, five years, five or six years now? I have been the music director of the Windsor Symphony Orchestra for ten years. Wow, how time flies yeah. when you're having fun. Well, uh, for the first several years of, of, of my position there, um, I was the associate conductor here with the Cincinnati Symphony and the Pops, and our kids were young enough that we could travel back and forth. Um, but they got to a certain age that uh, they needed to be in school full time, and so that's when we uh, decided to to make the move up north uh, to the Windsor Symphony as a music director. But I tell you what, there's there's nothing like being away for a while to make you appreciate what you have right here at home, and the great traditions of music in this region, um, and, and the great support for our arts institution, not just the orchestra, but all the performing arts here in this region. Uh, and, and the richness of, of what we have and the quality of what we have in this region is absolutely unsurpassed 
um, uh, by any other city in North America. It's um, uh, and so you know it, it really kind of underscores how special and important it is uh, for us to come home. What do you think is uh, your first most important task that you have uh, in your new job at the Cincinnati Pops? Well, all this last week, uh, of course, you know, we've been doing lots of interviews and um, uh, uh, photo shoots and, and all the rest. But probably most important is the, uh, the, the time that we've been rolling up our sleeves and starting to do our programming, not just for next season, which most of which is, has, has been done already, but thinking what we're going to be planning out for the, for the next several seasons as well. Um, and so it's uh, a, a lot of uh, people coming to the table with lots of fresh new ideas and defining ways that we, that we can synthesize these into, uh, into fabulously entertaining POPs programs. So what do you think you're going to be able to bring to the POPs that it, it might be lacking just a little right now? Well, you know, I mean, it, the, the POPs all orchestras are, are always in, a, um, in the process of, of transformation. Um, I, th I think our important thing here to do is to begin with a great legacy that we have uh, and see how we can um, uh, how we can bring more diverse music, uh, more world music, uh, uh, music that em embraces not only our region but uh, the entire globe uh, and finding ways that, that we can um, uh, also deliver our product, uh, not just on, on the stage of, of music hall, but also through recordings, through the new technology that's out there in terms of the internet, Facebook, and uh, uh, YouTube. Uh, I mean, it's such an exciting and diverse world of possibilities right now. And uh, we're going to find ways that, that we can make the very, very most of it. I know that Eric Kunzel established quite a legacy when it came to Cincinnati Pops recordings. Uh, what, some 80 CDs? Or uh, over 100. Over 100. I, I, I know, just, I lost count. <laughs> it's mind-boggling, isn't it? Uh, it uh, plans to continue the recording? Uh, absolutely. And uh, we're talking about those right now. And, and there might also be a, a Cincinnati Pops tour in the works as well. Uh, and when we think about that, that recording tradition, um, uh, the very first CD I ever purchased was the 1812 Overture Cincinnati Pops with, with Eric conducting. And then the warning on with the cannon, don't turn right. it up too loud. Right? Exactly. And of course, <laughs> I, I, I see that warning on there, right? And it's just a, oh, wow, cannon shots, don't turn it up too loud. So, you know, turn turn the amplify to 11. Yeah. Right? <laughs> da, 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 <laughs> and that was it. I blew my first pair of, of stereo speakers. On the Cincinnati Pops. <laughs> so they're costing you money from the beginning. <laughs> but, uh, well, it, it's, it's good to know. And, and plans to get out of the community. You, you are moving the family back to Cincinnati. Yeah, and I've and, seen in other accounts that you're talking yeah. about uh, that that was very important to uh, the search committee was to have a conductor who was going to spend most of his time here in the community. Well, a absolutely. And it was very important to me as well because um, uh, I, I really felt that that a position like this um, uh, in this city means so much, and there's so much that we can do to engage our community. And to do that, um, uh, we need to be here. Uh, I'm, anyway, my kids were born here. Um, uh, Tay and I were newlyweds when, when, I, when I came here uh, uh, for the associate conductor position. Um, uh, we have so many friends. This is home, uh, and it means so much to all of us to be able to come home and to... Uh, to be able to walk down to a graders or get our skyline, um, you know, do all the special things that are unique and special to Cincinnati. The kids are thrilled. Uh, both uh, Jack and Alma, in fact, uh, when we when we told them it was uh, a week ago today, um, uh, both both of them started crying, and, and Tay and I kind of looked at each other. And we were a little afraid, and and then Jack looked up to me as as he was embracing his sister and said, "Dad." There are tears of joy. Don't worry. <laughs> oh, they're happy to be moving south to warmer weather, too, right? <laughs> well, actually, you know, I, I, I just checked the weather report. It's actually warmer in Windsor, Ontario today than it is in Cincinnati. It's true. <laughs> That's what happens. Well, congratulations and welcome home. Thank you so much, Mark. It's, uh, it's a real thrill and uh, looking forward to, to making lots of great music with our own Cincinnati Pops. And we're looking forward to and enjoying that music making.